All right. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the uh, last video on subnetting. Uh, may do one more a little later on variable uh, subnetting, but <clears throat> for now, I think this will this will kind of wrap it up. This is the sixth video in subnetting uh, to see if a configuration is valid after you have set up a subnet. Uh, so these really need all the other videos to go along with it. Uh, so you need to understand all of that stuff to first off determine if a configuration is valid once you busted a subnet up. So here we go. Let's go ahead and take this thing on. So this is our setup. We have an IP address of 192.168.1.45. Uh, we have a custom subnet mask that so we have subnet at this thing. We have a subnet mask for this IP of 255.255.255.240. Now we're going to bring in something else here. We're going to bring in something that they call the default gateway, which is the next hop out of your network. Well, the default gateway in this case is 192.168.1.34. The trick to figuring out if this thing is valid or not, can the machine with that IP address talk to that default gateway? Well, it can only talk to that default gateway if they're in the same subnet. And you can't tell just by looking at the numbers because you don't know where this subnet splits unless you run through a couple of steps. So let's run through the steps. First off, back to the last video, we have to find the increment of this subnet and list all of the IDs. So again, where is the last one when it comes to this 240? Well, the last one is actually in the 16th place. Now we start listing out all of the networks. Again, see the 255s, they're the numbers we have to hold. 192.168.1. 192.168.1, we start with 0 and we keep going up by 16 until we find this IP address, 45. It's between 32 and 48. Now let's see if everything is valid. Is 192.168.145 and 192.168.134 in the same subnet? Does it, both of them fall between the same numbers? Well, in this case, yes they do. So we're good there. Now, the last video we talked about this. Is either one of them a network ID? Or any of them any of these numbers that we see here, the 32 or the 48. Well, no, we got 45 and 34, so we're good there. Now, one more question. Is either one of them a broadcast address, one number before these? Again, these numbers we see here are the network IDs. Back it up by one number, that's the broadcast address, 47 or 31. Are either one of them broadcast? No. So in this case, our configuration is valid. That IP address can talk to that default gateway and get out to the internet. All right, let's deal with another one. 192.168.131, 192.168.131. So we have 32 and 31 with a subnet mask of 224. So again, let's find the increment. Where is the last one in 224? Well, it's in the 30 second slot. So now we start with zero and we start going up. So again, here's our increments. 192.168.10, 1.32, .1 and 1.64. Now let's start asking these questions. Are they in the same network? Is 32 and 31 in the same network? No, they are not. Look, look at where 31 is at. 31 is between 0 and 32. 32 is actually in this one. So the default gateway is actually part of this one. But the IP address is part of this one. So, is either address a network ID? Yes. The 32. It's the network ID of your second subnet. Is either one of them a broadcast address? 
Yes, the default gateway is the broadcast address of this subnet. This configuration will not work. This machine will never talk to this default gateway for three reasons. We've totally messed up on this one. They're not in the same network. One's a broadcast, the other's a network. That will not work. Okay, one more. 172.16.865 with the 255.255.192 subnet. Default gateway of 172.16.8.1. So again, we got to find the increments. Where is the last one in that 192? It's going to be in the 64 slot. Now we list out our uh, addresses and we come up with 16.0, 16.64, and 16.128. Okay? Now, are the addresses inside of the same network? 16.8 and 16, uh, 16.865 and 16.81. Well, yes, they are. 16.8, both of these fall between here. So we're good. Now, is either one of them a network ID? 8.65 or 8.1? No, neither one of them are. They fall dead between 0 and 64. They got plenty of room. Are either one of them a broadcast address? No, they're not. That is a valid configuration because they're, they're well within their bounds of 0 to 64. Again, these are the hosts. These are the network. They're very good inside of there. All of these are all of these are hosts. Entire network, we're, we're fine. We have plenty of room inside of there. They're nowhere near the broadcast or the network ID. So that's that's an easy configuration there. Okay, so that's going to close out the subnetting. Um, again, if uh, if I can get some uh, some decks built, I'll do one on variable length subnet masking where we can change the length of our subnets where we can have one subnet that supports 200, one that supports 50, one that supports 20, one that supports 15 because it takes basically slider and uh, a binary to decimal and knowing your ranges it takes all of that to be able to do variable length subnet masking. Okay. Well thanks guys for watching and uh, again it's Chuck. Let me know if I can do anything to uh, any videos that you'd like to see or anything that I can post to uh, to help you guys out and I uh, appreciate any comments you have. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.